How's everyone doing today? CWK here, and today I'm going to be demonstrating on how to use the standards library that I have created. I'm going to be going over it kind of quickly, so let's go ahead and get into it. So, when you have the library, um, you're going to have a, a uh, standards.jar file. That's the main thing you're going to get. So you're going to go to a new project, and then you're going to do... Uh, just call it whatever you want. Then go, then go to next go to libraries, go to external chars, then you'll have it. I know I have a second one, but just know you'll have the right one. Go to finish, and there you go. So now it's, now it's already linked. Uh, first thing you're going to do when you make a game, uh, <coughs> go to class, make a, uh, make a game class, go to browse, make sure it extends standard uh, game. Alright, so there you go. So now you're going to have some methods you're going to have to implement. Uh, you have the constructor, first of all, the width, the height, then the title. And in your main method, you will have your have clips free. So there you go. <laughs> um, you'll pass it a new game with whatever you want your height of your frame to be, width, your height, and then the uh, demo, or the title, excuse me. Um, next thing you're going to do, um, this is sort of a broken feature right now, but the main thing you should do... It, the main thing you should be able to do is just call um, like something like uh, this dot start, and this will work, um, but that's only because um, well it won't work because uh, the method in standard game is not public; it's private. But the main purpose of a standard game is to have the window, the thread, and everything running available for you, and just so you, um, so the thread will run, it will render everything and it'll update everything. Pretty simple actually but right now you can't do that so what you have to do is you have to copy these two methods or these three methods excuse me and you'll have to um, you have to make tick and then make render and I'm not going to explain like the code in any of this like the you know the tick and the render I mean we we know what a buffer strategy does we know what threads do we know what booleans are so make sure you make a private thread thread object and then a private boolean object for to tell if the thread is running. Make sure you set the false first. Uh, you're going to need two more variables. You're going to need one for uh, display and the FPS to the console. And then one for displaying it to the uh, title of the J frame. And we'll make sure that that's actually true. Because that's actually pretty useful. Because it displays the updates per second and the uh, the frames per second, which is pretty cool. So, um, in here you'll have a you have the tick method and you'll have the uh, render method. You'll have buffer strategy bs equals uh, this dot get buffer <coughs> this dot get buffer strategy. I'm gonna check if it's equal to null. If it is, which it'll be when it starts out. This dot create that create buffer strategy three, then return. And you're gonna do graphics g equals bs dot get draw graphics. And make a, a 2D graphics object. Then you're going to have a black screen due to a set color. What? Not set clip, set color. Set color, color dot black, due to dot fill rec zero zero. This dot get window dot return width not get width this dot get window dot return height. So I'll fill up to to the screen and then you can actually start drawing crap. And after all that you do g dot dispose, g2 dot dispose, and bs dot show. Then that should work. Uh, and it does, nice. So that will make every that'll make the basic frame for you. All right. So let's go ahead and go down the line. Um, standard animator. Um, this class is for. I can't show this because I don't have any sprites right now. But um, I will I will explain it. So this is for basically. Actually, I can't I can't demo it. Um, I'll go to I'll go to this little clone that I'm making right now on Super Mario Brothers. Um, as you can see, these um these blocks right here they're animating. This um this is example this uh sorry this is showing the standard animator class at work 
and as you can see, um, as the players move, as the player moves, they will um they will go between image to image, and as you can see here, it does work for both small and big Mario. So that's the standard animator class at work. You have a array list of buffered images, a delay which is in like basically ticks of the game, and then the object itself. So if it's not animating, you just return by default. It's set to true, but it will terminate once you set default. And it'll loop through the amount of images you have. It'll have a counter. If that counter goes greater than the goes greater than delay, excuse me, um, it'll swap the images. And once it um, once it gets to the list or the end of it, it'll repeat itself. Pretty simple. All right, so let's go to the next one. Standard audio. Now this one, um, I can't, I can't uh, display either because I don't have any sound, but I will explain it. So Java 2D and Java FX, which is a library, I didn't make this, but it's built into Java. I think I don't know six or seven, one of those two, maybe eight. I don't know. <laughs> um, and let's see. Um, Java 2D. The native audio support works for mainly sound effects. Java FX is mainly for longer files. Like um like you know, like soundtracks or something. So you'll have one for um uh one for the standard audio, which is just the sound effect, and then one for the standard audio with um uh <clears throat> with just the uh, you'll pass it the file name, and then if it's a boolean, if it's a sound effect. And you should pass this false, because, um, I should probably fix this, but just, just look at the documentation, it'll be fine. So, RMP is only for Java 2D. Um, it re resets the audio clip to zero, the frame position of it to zero at the beginning of it, and then plays it. So, it'll repeat it, and it'll play it. Repeat, play, repeat, play. Um, this one starts the clip for Java 2D, this one stops it, closes it. It tells if it's running. Uh, FX plays, pretty simple, plays the FX. It'll loop it if it's not a sound effect, it'll always loop it. Adjust the, adjust the volume, pretty simple. All right. Standard draw. Um, <clears throat> this is sort of like the color class, but way extended. Basically, every color on the planets here. If you can't find your color, then I'm sorry. <laughs> Make your own. All right. Center fade. This one's a pretty. Um, this is a pretty hard um, algorithm. Well, it's not hard, but I mean, it took a while for me to work this. This is in my AP Computer Science Principles Performance Task. And what it is, is it will fade from one color to the other and back, um, back and forth, over and over, based on a certain clock. So I can actually, um, I can demo this, but I need to make sure that the audio is off because if it's not, we'll have copyright claims. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, volume mixer. I have to do it real fast. Mute. There we go. So, um, as you can see, this text will fade in and out from red to blue based on a timer. All right, pretty simple. Actually, we can use this um this example right here for a bunch of things. So we'll pull this to the side. There we go. Pull that right there. Get you out of the way. <clears throat> All right, so that's basically um you pass it the color C one T two and the alpha the lower the timer, the um the faster it'll take or the the slower it'll take to shift. The closer it is to one, the shorter it'll take. All right. Uh, let's see center game. Um, this is what you use to this is what you extend your main game on. Um, you oh that was scary. Um, sorry. Um, you'll have start, stop, run, tick, and render. Those are the five main methods you need. So, just extend it for right now, copy those methods, and use them. For right now, that's all you gotta worry about. Um, let's see, center game object. So, this one's the main one, and these probably need to be doubles and ints, just being serious, but it's okay. So there's a ton of overloading. Or <coughs> excuse me. There are a ton of overloaded constructors here that each pass different things. 
So some of them you pass the in the x y with height. Some of them you pass the ID of the object. Some of them if you some of them you pass if it's interactable or not. Um, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Basically, this uh, this class you extend to any entity in your game, any sort of game object, like the player, an enemy, a power up, anything. <clears throat> Pretty simple. All right. Standard Handler, a very, very, very important class. So, Standard Handler will handle anything that is a standard game object. So, it's very important that you make anything you want to be rendered and ticked um, a standard game object. And you can do that by using standard game object, whatever, equals new, then your subclass. Or, could be the other way around. I think that's right, though. But, anyway. Um... You'll put any object that you make, like player, you'll add it to a standard handler, then you'll call handler.tick, handler.render, and it'll render everything that's in the entity's array list that's a part of standard handler. So let's say you have a hundred bricks or something that are all standard game objects. They're all in the handler. So it'll tick them all and it'll render them all. So you don't have to do brick 0.render, brick 1.render, brick 2.render. Brick three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. Um, there's a couple of them. You have remove entity, clear entities, clear all entities. Um, this will sort them based on, I don't know. Um, this is something that my friend made. I don't really know what it is. Uh, we have, I think it tests like um like the range of them, like the boundaries or something. But I'm not entirely sure. It's not very important right now, at least for many cases. But it may be, who knows. <laughs> um, just don't worry about it right now. Uh, standard ID. This will determine what type of object you have. Like player, particle, trail, enemy wall, obstacle, standard game object, standard button, interactor, entity, blah, 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 blah. Basically a bunch of stuff. So you do standard ID dot whatever it is in your constructor. Okay. Standard particle. Um, that's what these little things are right here. Um, this I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these little things that are flying across the string are string screen are standard particles. You'll pass it an int x y the life of the particle, the color of it, and the standard handler that you'll be putting it into. And um, it will generate a velocity, and it will tick. And as long as it's alive, it will keep going across the screen. If not, then it will remove it from the uh. From the handler respectively and um, the life is determined based on how faded it is in accordance to the screen so um, I think some last indefinitely while others I don't I think don't but um, I think most of these are indefinite could be wrong because most of them are just flying across the screen but um, what it will do is it will keep going and as long as this transparency of the color, or of the particle, is greater than zero, it'll keep going. But if it's not, it'll remove it from the entity, or from the handler, and it will terminate. Alright, standard trail. So, standard game objects will have these, or they can have them. A trail is, well, you see these little trails that are following the particle? Because this isn't just a bunch of particles, like, all in a straight shot. These are particles with trails. And the trails are sort of like a representation of the object, just at a faded, like, they're slightly faded more than the object itself. And they will keep going, it will basically, a better example of this would be in this game right here. Let me pull it up real quick. Uh, I think this is it. Yeah. Please don't blare sound. Good. Alright, so as you can see, um... All these right here are trails, and they're being constantly deleted and rem and added to the game. All right, that's that's basically what a trail is. Um, you'll pass it a let's close out this package or this project. Excuse me. Um, trail. You'll pass it an x y width height color, the life of it, the life of each square, the game, and the handler itself that it will be inserted into. All right, pretty simple. Uh, two more. Window, pretty simple, the width, the height, the title, and the game itself to add it, the component. Uh, pretty simple, not too bad, you know, you have 
get your setters, everything. Just uh, basically a J-frame. All right, last one. Uh, standard uh, standard ops. So it's an abstract class. You can't instantiate it, but you can do standard ops dot rand. This will generate any random number between negative two point. Well, it will generate a random number between min and max your parameters. Pretty simple. This is just here, just to return a short. Uh, public stack boolean mouse over. You'll pass it mx, my, int x, and y, int width and its height. So mx and my are your mouse coordinates. X, y width and height are basically rectangle coordinates. So let's say let, let's say let's say this is a rectangle. X, y width height. Mouse coordinates are whatever. Mouse x, mouse y, and according to the screen. So it will return true if the mouse is inside those boundaries, false otherwise. Pretty simple. Last one, font, init font, pass it a path, pass it a, a size of the font, it will return the font, modified, and ready to use if needed. Like, you can pass it a font, the TTF uh, for the font, I believe, this, I believe that's what the exemption is. And it will return, it will parse the font, it will instantiate it, and it will do everything is needed to get the font ready, and you can then use it. Alright, so that's pretty simple. Uh... Overall, pretty simple library. Nothing special, really. Um, interactors, don't worry about these. Just, I don't know why I have this there anymore. Don't worry about this one either. Don't use particle. Use standard particle if you're going to do anything. But, yeah. <coughs> uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.